Okay, shall we start? Okay. Hi, everyone. So today we are going to talk about single cell RNA-seq, and which is a technology and very rapid development in the recent years. So I'm going to show you some uh, different single cell RNA sequencing technologies, and we will talk about how to perform the quality control, the clustering, and other downstream analysis uh, for single cell RNA-seq. And also, at last, we will talk about how to perform differential expression analysis, especially for single cell RNA-seq. And so first, you might ask why we need to do single cell. So a simple answer to this question is that because of the heterogeneous of the cell populations. And you may, as you may see in these histopathology pictures, so the left picture are from the human blood. There are several different cell types in it. There are some immune cells, like the monocytes, like the neutrophils, which uh, can help us fight against the virus and bacteria. And also there are some, like, some uh, plat, plat cells which can repair in the blood vessel and stop, stop bleeding. And also for the uh, small intestine, you can see different cell types there. So uh, usually if you do a bulk RNA-seq, so you can only get the gene expression of all the average cell types. So uh, however, if we, we perform single cell RNA-seq, we can get the gene expression of individual cell. Then we, based on the gene expression, we can tell which cell is the monocyte, which cell is neutrophil, and what's the difference between them. And another drawback of the typical RNA-seq data is that it will give you some misleadings between genes. Uh, let's assume that we have three genes colored by red, blue, and green in these single cells. And if you perform a bulk RNA-seq data, uh, RNA uh, which is an average of all the cells, you can see from the count that actually these three genes are of the same gene expression level. Then if you perform this for different tissues, you might think that these genes, their expression uh, are positive correlation. But if you perform single cell RNA-seq, you can see that actually the blue genes are never coexisting with the red genes and green genes. So actually its cor expression correlation is negative rather than positive. So that's the advantage of the single cell RNA-seq. So how people usually do the single cell RNA-seq? So actually the single cell RNA-seq uh, protocol in the very early days named the SmartSeq is very similar with the one used in the bulk RNA-seq. You can just imagine that people keep optimizing these protocols. Finally, they can do single cells. And so for this protocol, you can first lysis these cells. And for each of the RNAs with polyase, you can use some oligo DT primer to enrich these RNAs and perform the reverse transcription to get the cDNAs. And so uh, an important step for the SmartSeq is that they use a uh, another uh, term, the term uh, template switching, which is, which is another reverse transcription from the 5 prime end. So they can also capture the RNAs from the 5 prime end, which, which uh, at last, they can ca get the full length transcript. Then after that, you can uh, perform PCR, PCRs to amplify these cDNAs, and then do some segmentations on these cDNAs uh, for, to break the long, DNA, long DNAs into short ones for sequencing. And you can see that for these protocols, you need to do this experiment one by one. So uh, it is very labor intensive. So usually for each study, people only generate about hundreds, hundreds of single cells for each, for each study. So, so what if we want to do more single cells? So usually in some conditions, you are dealing with uh, tens of thousands of single cells. So how can we sequence them more efficiently? So in 2005, people in the Harvard developed an automatic single cell machines named the DropSeq. I believe many of you may already heard that. So this is really blow the single cell area. So the basic idea is that you've got a machine that has a multiple tunnels. And in one tunnel, uh, you can sort and push in the cells one by one. And in, a, in, other, in another tunnel, you can just push the beads and the lysis buffers one by one and you can use some oils to control the speed. Then in the final tunnel, you can form a droplet uh, in which only one cell is connected to one bead. Then you collect all the droplets and you can lysis the cells together and then let them hybridize to these beads and break the droplets to perform the reverse transcription and 
do the downstream uh, sequencing like the ball currency. So as you may see that, so actually in the end, we sequence these single cells all together. So how can we separate each single cells? So the, the, the key of the secret is in, the, in, these, in these micro bees. So which is like uh, usually specially designed to separate these cells. So there is a very important element called cell barcode. Uh, you can just like, uh, so it, which is usually a DNA sequence, uh, to, uh, usually 12 BP base pair or 20 base pair long. And uh, with, for which to, uh, is, is unique to, to each, each single cell, like, to each uh, barcode. You can just imagine this, this as you just use some numbers to label different goods. This is just use some, some barcodes to label different cells. And so uh, as we know that the DNA is consists of four nucleotides, A, C, G, T. So with the 12 base pair barcode, you can have about the 12th power of four, which is a millions of combinations. So you can just label the cells as much as you want. And also another thing uh, in these bees uh, is the UMI, which is also specially designed for the single cells. Because usually for the single cell RNC experiment, we usually perform the PCRs to amplify the cDNAs. But actually the single cells, uh, it has very low starting materials. So you, you, you need to perform multiple rounds of PCR amplifications. So this might be generating some bias because some transcripts might be go through more rounds and some transcript might be go through less round. So they use a special barcode named UMI, which can be connected to the cell barcode and also connected to the transcript to label these different transcript. And once you sequencing these uh, barcodes and UMIs, so for different transcripts, if you see some uh, same UMIs, you will, you will know that this, this transcript are actually from the same PCR applications, not the real transcript expression levels. Only the transcripts with unique UMIs are the real expression levels. So when you're doing the analysis, you need to comp compress the transcript with the same UMI to what? So actually to brief summary, this part is that we use the barcode to separate the cells and we use the UMIs to separate the transcript. So is that clear? So, and, and also there are many uh, online videos about, this, about these machines, which is like, which is very uh, cool. You can see it on the YouTube website. And so another thing that boasts this area is that now the droplet based methods have a commercial version from the company named Tengas Genomics. So they develop a machine that has a micro flow disk with eight channels. So for each channel, as you can imagine, it is at, at the same as a droplet machine uh, in the previous slides. So by doing this, they are, they are more efficient to, to processing these cells. And so they can do uh, more, uh, more cells at, a, at, a, at one time. And also because this is a com commercial product, they have more standardized protocol, more standardized reagents, and also the analysis pipelines. So the data format is the same different different. So, it is more comparable between different studies. So let's compare the difference between the smart base and the droplet based methods. So both of them need the fresh cells to be to, to input. And we know that the smart seed based method needs to do, do the experiment one by one. So the it is, uh, throughput is relatively low. And for the drop seed methods, you can just do tens of, tens of thousand cells at one time. So it, it is uh, relative high throughput. And another thing we need to mention is that actually the smart uh, SmartSeq is a plate-based method. So you, you got the cell licensed in the well. So usually it will not have the RNA leaking problems. But for drops, dropping based method, so you just license the cells in these oils. So the RNAs, RNAs might be leaking from these droplets. So the drop, dropout rate for these drop-based methods might be higher than the smart-based methods. So, and, and also the SmartSeq use a template switch to get a full length transcript, but the drop based methods, it still has three prime bias. And also the drop based methods use the cell barcode and UMIs to separate the cells and also to correct the PCR bias. And also uh, at last, so as the SmartSeq has more coverage on the transcript, so it is more accurate on the per cell exchange expression. But for these uh, dropsync based methods, as it had more high dropout rate for each cell. 
So you can just cluster these cells and use the per cluster expression levels as your final expressions. So which, which, we, which is the aggregation. Hi. So when you say drop out, you just mean that some cells, um, you get no RNA levels from them? That's what drop out means? Uh, yeah, so the question is that, uh, so when we get dropouts, whether we see the cells with no tra transplant level. Uh, so actually, the answer to this is that you, you, in each cell, you have multiple transcript. For some cells, you will get like 2,000 or 4,000 transcript. For other cells, you, got, you will get less transcript. So which means that the, the cells get less transcript is have a higher dropout rate. In terms of dropouts, I think for Tumac, there are two levels. One is you might input the machine 2,000 cells, but at the end, you only get 2,000 cells. So the many ones here, they don't go into a droplet, so multiple cells go into the same droplet. So basically, you don't get for every cell the input as an output. Whereas, say, you just have like an embryo with very few cells. Smart team might be a good idea. If you have, you know, tissues or yeah. blood, or PMC, you know, like a PCD, you get a lot of cells, but then you can lose a lot of them. The drop, so the drop-up can happen at the cell level and at the transplant level. Yeah. And we try to get